Um, that's all in great detail in the report. Um, so, you know, here are the kinds of things that they produce. Amicus briefs. Well, what they're trying to tell you, tell the court, amicus, by the way, means friend of the court, uh, they're trying to tell the courts that this is a really big, important legal issue that we have to have a free internet. Well, yes, we have to have internet freedom. That's very, very important. Now, let's, let's move slightly to a different place. Let's consider the First Amendment. That is the most important protection of free speech that this country has. It is a bedrock. First Amendment. But First Amendment does not give you the right to stand up in a crowded theater and scream, fire, fire. You know, there's a balance and some reasonable protections in place. Well, Section 230 of the, Commu of the Communications Decency Act, which is a bizarre name under uh, what it's now allowing, uh, cannot be allowed to, to sanction and, and promote uh, something like Backpage. There needs to be realistic amendments put in place uh, which would give victims the ability to hold this outrageous, immoral operation uh, accountable for its multiple abuses. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, John. Um, uh, and uh, I want to bring on now Mary Mazio, uh, who is the writer, director, producer of I.N. Jane Doe, and she is online, so you're going to have to listen to her. But I can tell you, uh, if you look up indefatigable in the dictionary, there's Mary's picture. <laughs> and if anyone's going to make sure there's decency in the Communications Decency Act, it is Mary. So take it away, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for inviting me to join the call and for the effort that you and your team uh, at Consumer Watchdog have put into this incredibly detailed and P.S. sobering report. Um, it was a pleasant surprise, Jamie, to learn about your project and your report, and thank you for your kind remarks about the film helping to inspire that. From my perspective, I'm not looking at any one individual, and many are named in the Google report. Some have power, some do not. But rather, look at Google as a whole and its ability to be part of the solution instead of continuing to fund the defensive back page. If any one company can help fix the problem of online child sex trafficking, it's Google. Yes. As Jamie mentioned, our project follows the story of several mothers, including Nicole, whose daughters, ranging in age from 13 to 15, were sold for commercial sex on Backpage. These children were bought and sold upwards of 15 times a day, 24-7, repeatedly raped. Those are the facts. Despite the fact that a recent Senate investigation found that Backpage, as Jamie mentioned, actively participated in the crime, and that the principles of Backpage are now the subject of a grand jury investigation, the Center for Democracy and Technology and the Electronic Frontier Foundation have jumped into these cases and frankly have institutionalized these cr this crime. In fact, the First Circuit Court in Boston recently dismissed the claims of three Jane Doe children going out of its way in the court ruling to talk about how persuasive the arguments of the CDT and the EFF were in making their final decision. The tech community and the CDT and the EFF's unwavering support of Backpage has legitimized what is effectively a boiler room operation facilitating child sex trafficking. A crime, by the way, which affects hundreds of thousands of children on an annual basis. And with Backpage raking in, according to the Senate report, hundreds of millions of dollars on an annual basis. And it's all protected by Section 230. It's clear that technology has outpaced our regulatory system, and yet companies that we know and love, like Google and Facebook, continue to fiercely defend Section 230, arguing that as vanguards of, air quotes, free speech, they can host any and all third-party content with no responsibility whatsoever. Counterfeit prescription drugs, 
scam Dr. Oz ads, fake news, advertising of children, it's all fair game. Quote unquote free speech. But here's the deal. Bipartisanship can and should exist on matters that mm-hmm. test our basic humanity. Just last month, a bill was introduced into the House of Representatives to close this loophole of Section 230. And a, and a Senate version amending Section 230 is also afoot. This legislation may just be the only bipartisan measure to pass Congress this year, and it cannot happen soon enough. No one is looking to impede free speech or slow down innovation. However, since 1996, when this federal statute was first enacted, there is now new technology that allows these tech communities to manage huge amounts of data and to track all of our purchases and online movements. Low-cost data mining tools now exist, which should be required to be deployed in order to track those who buy or sell children online. Backpage recently announced that it was shuttering the escort section of its website. Only as Jamie noted, they are now over on its dating pages. And by the way, the other sex sites owned and operated by Backpage. It is up and fully operational, not only here in the U.S., but across the globe. And today, children are being sold for sex. And so this issue shows no signs of abating. We need the tech community to help, to switch sides, and to come to the table to help shape the ultimate solution to this problem, both from a technological and legal standpoint. Recently, a 16-year-old child from Chicago was advertised on Backpage. She never returned home, killed at the hands of her Backpage buyer. This child and the many other children exploited online should not be acceptable collateral damage for a free and open Internet. It should no longer be legal to host advertisements for the the sale of children in America. We need Google's help. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. I want to bring in, uh, just to show this is a bipartisan issue, uh, a gentleman who's the executive director of the Faith and Freedom Coalition, which is headed by Ralph Reed. This is a bipartisan issue about America's families. Outside of the Senate and outside of the House of Representatives, it probably is one inside the represent- House of Representatives and the Senate as well. But the only thing that stands between decency in the Communication Decency Act and a change to Section 230 to allow for the prosecution of online uh, child sex trafficking under it is Google's lobbyist, Susan Molinari, and Google's founders and CEOs, uh, Eric Schmidt, Sergey Brin, and Larry Page. We plead with them to listen to both sides of the aisle here and join us in this, in this, in this fight. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim Head. Uh, Executive Director of Faith and Freedom Coalition, uh, and uh, joining us in releasing the report. Uh, take it away, Tim. Well, thank you very much, and <clears throat> we're, uh, we're honored to be a, a part of uh, not only this call, but also this um, this report more broadly, and most broadly, this this whole effort. So, um, as as has been very poignantly and also expertly pointed out, this um, this plight at this point of, uh, of, of human trafficking at large and particularly sex trafficking here in the United States and across the country is um, it, it really flourishes in shadow or in darkness. And um, reports like this one and um, movies like, um, like I Am Jane Doe and stories like, uh, like uh, the families that we just heard from earlier are are beacons of light that are uh, we believe are starting to to puncture through that that veil if you will of darkness um unfortunately <clears throat> not only is this, are, are these actual practices um that nicole S. alluded to earlier they're the heinous practice itself it really is it's so repulsive so repugnant to us that we really don't even like to think about it um how could this even happen you know in our anywhere in the world certainly in our in our in, in the united states and for that matter the more people learn about it the more they realize frequently it's happening in their own uh, town and sometimes in their own neighborhood um our, our the faith and freedom coalition is based in uh, in a suburban atlanta georgia and the attorney general and, and uh and uh the georgia bureau of investigation only recently 
uh, made a report in the suburb, uh, made an, an arrest, a raid, an arrest of uh, of eight girls that were being detained in a home in suburban uh, Atlanta. Uh, so these are, these are not um, this is not happening in Bangkok or in uh, Laos or, or far distant uh, foreign places. This is happening um, in very uh, near and intimate places to Americans even. And so. <clears throat> um, the challenge here not only is 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 the supply, but but clearly the demand, if you will, uh, of, of this of this plight as well. And, and that's particularly, I think, where uh, where the Communications Decency uh, Act comes into into play. We're, we we have to to work on both ends of this equation if we're going to eradicate this plight. Uh, not only on the on the uh, the supply side, certainly dealing with traffickers themselves and. Um, and, and monitoring their, their movement and their finances, et cetera, but also on, on the demand side of it, um, you know, solicitors themselves, but also people that allow um, the, the nexus or the, or the communication between the two, which, of course, is the, uh, the point of, uh, of the Communications Decency Act in and of itself, as it's been eloquently alluded to, uh, at this point, technology um, uh, regulation is, is creeping along while technology is quantum leaping uh, along. And, uh, and that, uh, that difference, that, um, that, that gap between the two is where this, this darkness has, has developed and, and continued to, um, you know, frankly, to flourish, unfortunately. And so the reason why Faith and Freedom Coalition is engaged in this is because we, we do believe in, uh, in the importance of, of the First Amendment and free speech, but that, of course, has to be balanced with, uh, with safety of our communities at large, and more specifically, uh, the safety of those who are, who are uh, without fault, the innocence um, that, that, um, that we're uh, most concerned with here. So. Uh, it's, it's certainly our, our opinion that uh, there needs to be a profound uh, conversation that's happening that really at this point has been, we believe, has been far too symbolic. Um, the, the meeting this morning, uh, on, we're, we're, of course, we're, con uh, we're encouraged that the White House is, is highly engaged in this, Department of Justice is engaged in this. Um, and and uh, and now uh, Google is coming to is, is, is coming to the to the to the table. We trust that's in good good faith. Um, clearly, the biggest bad actor here is Backpage itself and its complicity in these practices. But um, but there are enablers, um, whether whether willing or or just recklessly, um, there are enablers of Backpage, and that's that's the crux of, of what the faith and freedom is interested in, and also the frankly the faith community across the country there are individual churches across the united states nonprofits that are being founded uh you know on a regular basis now to combat this uh this evil and we need the most powerful voices and um and brokers in this process to join the fight against trafficking not just kind of uh circle and hover above and continue to uh, to amicus, uh, amicus, you know, and study this uh, this uh, this topic as an academic exercise. This is real. These are real people. These are real families being impacted. Uh, and every day that goes goes by with just another report, uh, there actually are are devastating effects to that. So, uh, so thank you for uh, for for this report, for the pr pressure and the light that we believe that uh, that it is bringing to this. Um, to these actors, and uh, we remain uh, committed to um, to helping that that pressure and that light uh, continue to accelerate. And, and, and thank you, Tim. And finally, we also have on the line uh, Jerome Elam of the Trafficking America Task Force, and himself a survivor. So, uh, Jerome, uh, would you like to share a little bit about your view and the group's view on the report? Absolutely, Jamie. I just want to say I'm very honored to be here today. And thank you so much to Consumer Watchdog, and especially to Mary Mazio, and the courageous, you know, individuals who were part of her film that just, you know, stood up and, you know, took back their dignity and talked about how they had suffered at the hands of Backpage. Um, Backpage is a, is a scourge on humanity, um, and, and, and Mary's film just scratches the surface of how many victims are out there. And the important thing to realize is it's not just the kids that are from low economic conditions. It's everybody. Sex traffickers are on social media. They're going after children, you know, all over the world. And, and, and it doesn't matter what your socioeconomic status is. 
um, they will go after any child and traffic them on the Internet. And 